Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to another exciting and everything and amazing propaganda cast from your host and Pearl Dane, the one, the only master propaganda hero psych like defender of the fatherland, off into a glorious 1v1. Oh, Neville Shanker, and these days, Macross fighting for the Red Army, the Soviet Union, Comrade Stalin, and the 212th Rifle Division here, backed up by partisans with Radeon Intercept, partisan troops. Anti-tank and ambush tactics and spy network and mark vehicle in the west. It is a login fighting for the Oberkommando West of Germany, Deutschland. Here with the 7th Panzer Division featuring Overwatch, Elite Armored and Luff of Ground Forces, largely the usual suspects there. A double engineer special rifle command society for Macross versus double full squad engineers for login. And as always, a big hearty thanks to my Patreon supporters, champions and heroes one and all. And without them, I would not be able to do this in so many other episodes. So big thanks to all of those. Other people who enjoy the ranks by pledge on Patreon or they can donate by PayPal. Finally, commenting, liking, sharing, subscribing helps me out a bunch as well. Storm Pioneer sitting out of lock in, heading for the southern field point there. Grabbing the point here with the full screen of the era. And we can see he's actually getting a pretty disruptive, aggressive start here from Lockin. Sitting in the storm pond, he's not just looking to like hit the fuel pond, he's looking to hit the fuel pond while Macro's trying to grab it. I think Macro saw the sort of shadow of the storm pond, he's backs off there rather than lose things. He needs to have lost there. But yeah, pretty sneaky interrupt there by Lockin. Thumbs up to that. We got the first Pim Troop Squad Squad here, the Strafe. Fun fact the Germans themselves also make use of penal troopers in the Second World War. You just tend to get talked about a lot less. Folks getting north of us there. But so far, very quiet. And we see he's backed off. Interesting enough, he did not try to grab the fuel point. Perhaps what he's going to extend this sort of backs off. Scout coupling up in Macross, the M3A1. Was primarily used by the Soviet reconnaissance formations, the Aras Vetki. Folks from the Gnees here. We got a bit of Bartwell leg right down there. He's trying to land some sandbags, but the Gnees make that a bit diff difficult. But still, a bit of a challenging study for Macros. Like, Logan is basing strong and doesn't need to get to the fuel point there. So that could actually mean Macros' economy develops a bit slightly slower pace, but at the same time, we sort of notice how much he's capturing. Not too slow either. Third full squad there for Logan. Scout cutting north of C. Note, so it uh, crews would normally, I think, also ship the. Rear machine gun towards the front as well, basically getting two machine guns flying forwards there. That's the machine gun there. Could basically move alongside the railing, can sort of see alongside the inside there, the scout car. A little fun fact there. But there it goes, scout car racing in the foot, flying over the car, anti case into the side arm of the scout car here. But they don't do enough damage. John Pony's almost got the still fuel point here. Mine's laid down as one well in case we can rush down, but the scout can pursue. Thumbs up there to lock in. Definitely a rough development here for Macro so far. Lock in is definitely stood out maneuvering so far. Again, Pion Troopers, Engineers, all that. Scout cars could dip. Well, Scout cars, Pion Troopers, maybe Engineers with Flamethrowers could give the lock in a bit of a tougher time once he gets that going. Fast track as well here for lock in. Straight into Overwatch. That probably means a Jaeger here. Being rushed out, She's got the southern fuel point too here. Macro start is definitely being uh, disrupted here by lock and northern point big CST. So far, the Germans are definitely ahead there. And there you go again, waits for the Pumas to sort of commit to the ground the point, then engage with the Sturm Pioneer from behind heavy cover. More Pumas are coming in, but still, it's going to be a bit expensive here for Macros versus lock in. Still, he will get the point back as ultimately lock in has committed enough force here to sort of hold the fuel point for any prolonged period of time, but he clearly doesn't care about it. He just wants like mess with Macross as efficiently as possible, if you will. Third penalty squad here for Macross. Up here, Scout Cup between the full of these. No anti tank weapons, nothing else there from Login as of yet. Belgo headquarters almost done. May see a fast ish flat half track here. We do get the KMF of Login. Also, he's not grabbed the point right next to his base. That said, it does have a slightly awkward, shall I say, capping path there. Can lead to some players overlooking it, but actually is uh, beneficial there for Macro. There you go, race straight for the car from the scout car. Continues flying up here, low on health, low on numbers. Could be a mistake there if he gets rushed. A Kenrev almost done, ground the point T. So on the few points, season there goes straight to the mine, costing Dimitri and Constantine their lives. They get well, their feet blown off cleanly. A Kenrev on the way there, and tight tank on there. A Kenrev out for login. I think he's realized the point there's not been grabbed, but he can't deal with it. He has to like deal with the points here. Good uh, raid there by Macross. Again, not looking to grab the points, just looking to disrupt and slow down Login's economy. Back in Macross base, no medics yet. I would expect them soon. Got partisans, guessing anti-tank. No, actually assault. 
or anti-personnel packages. Mostly, nowadays you see people going for parts, they're typically going for like, you know, the radiant stuff and then like a single pantry shape squad, but Macross actually went for the PPS-841 upgrade there, which also gives them a fifth member. But of course, you need to reinforce that first. Scout rushing in there. Burning through the foot come the years. South of Charity Vet Mission could have been a bit into his choice. There we go. Kepler takes out the scout car, costing two years lives as they did not wear their seatbelts. Remember, people, wear your seatbelts. North of Pimps, there's the advantage of Sturm Pioneer. Pardon siding out. They're ready to ambush some Germans with their Pepeschkas. Pulls the flank in the Strafbat. And we got a Yeager squad out here for Overwatch. Getting surrounded, in fact, out of negative cover. Not a great spot to be for the Fultz companies. Pims with the Alter now in negative cover. Getting focused down pretty hard. Has the mechanized upgrade there ready, but lacks the munitions for the G33. There you go. Troop reinforcing healing. Pardons all retreating there. Obviously wants to reinforce fully. Worth noting, Macross has yet to upgrade field medics, which is actually a bit surprising there. Bit surprising there. Anyways, upgrading in the part of reinforcing the partisans they've obviously already upgraded grab the point here grab northern point advancing for the center there with a significant infantry force there we go partisans fully reinforced here for macross and the red army flanking the troops of the s54 building straff but that's going to force them lock into retreat there's no way you can really resist that without large numbers of more significant firepower Plus, the flame, of course, makes it even more dangerous. In the end, the pimps should suffer next to no damage. One of the engineers take the brunt of it. Parts moving in there, creeping up. There we go. Swiftly advancing there. Taking some losses there from the full squad years. Fun fact about Soviet Pardons, but a good portion of them were actually like Soviet troops caught behind the lines after, you know, Operation Barbarossa and just basically turned to sort of partisan warfare. Would actually also include occasionally the Soviet airborne from failed Soviet airborne operations. We have now installed a field hospital at headquarters. Flag after their flag in and the German army. No tech yet from Macross, but again, disruptive aggressive play there, going straight for the car points, looking to shut down Larkin's resource income as swiftly as possible. Very good. Then he's finally grabbed the point right out of his base. I'm surprised it took him that long, actually. But again, to some degree, I'm not surprised he overlooked it either. Occasionally, I mean, this point and this point, they are just sort of so awkwardly positioned. They can occasionally be easy to overlook because they don't just quite fit in with a natural capping order either. Jaeger yeah, still not upgraded with the T-43. Flak pick rushing out there for login. The 251-17. Sturm Pioneer, high risk of getting wiped out here, Whew. but nope, narrowly survives, but I imagine with significant trauma. Tank review tank command there, up for Macross soon, we'll then probably go for the T7 here versus Login. Scout card there, but could be salvaged for a bit of fuel, I think that'd be pretty good if Login. There you go, Pioneer was caught with the flat half track heavy, two centimeter flat fire, turning into them. Grab the center for the Jaegers. Can upgrade now, by the way. Sturm Pioneer in dying reinforcements. No medics, by the way, there for the Battle Headquarters. There we go. Plus an MD-34. Lot of suppressive fire by here then from Logan versus Macross. Pioneers are being shot at by the Fultz Grenadiers. Still no upgrades there for Logan, by the way. North here, Fultz with the Penal Troopers. Easily right out there. Finally upgrading there, or reinforcing, plus we got the medics ready as well here. MD34 there hold forwards. Southern Victor Point seems to be logging. We got 436 versus 438. There you go. T some light tank here for Macross. That's definitely going to be a significant challenge here for Lockin, who's still. Oh, he's finally upgrading. As I say, he still has an upgrade, but then he does it. Mines here for Macross as well. Very good. Need to reinforce these partisans as swiftly as possible. Mines down there, very good. Up north here, pimps moving about. Engineers routed. 
filtering to the news parts and the people doing stuff with the anti tank rifles, the PTRS 41. He's being shot a bit there. Get the T-70 light tank, light tank out. T-70 moving out there for the glory of the Red Army flag and the Pimps will return. Releasing hell upon them with the two on the flat, but the T-70 is going to be a problem that the flat half track cannot deal with. South Apium keep finally getting suppressed here by the MD-34. Sturm Pune could not close in and try and finish them off here. He may also want to consider actually upgrading the Sturm Pioneers with a patch trick once he gets the munitions. Just help us with the T-70 plus future armor. I think that could be a very good either to consider for login. More anti-tank rifles. He's committing like pretty aggressively to anti-tank rifles all of a sudden here. Bit curious of that one. Also for those wondering, the Germans did also have their own anti-tank rifles, but they kind of realized anti-tank rifles had a significant series of issues and quickly moved on towards them, like, you know, stuff like the Panzerfaust and later the Panzer Shrek. They did try to make some use out of the Panzerbüchse and basically turned them into grenade launchers that basically fired the rifle grenades. Sort of a little fun sight note there. Which point then came known as the Granatenbüchse. Got the Parsons and the Pumes moving out here. Straight into the MD-54. There we got the Parsons plank up here. Two kills so far. Close to already. Not enough to sure for a grenade there. Push back the full up north here. Holding up the center. Bit of skirmishing here, Parsons closing in there on the flank, but having it to do so at a slow pace, they can't actually exploit this, and then he's all turning around. Plus, now got Jaegers on top of the Sturm Pines to cover against such a flank attempt here. Up north, the T-Sun is pressing a bit there. In the center route, up north, t sending backing off there. Clearly a bit hesitant, committing too far there. And meanwhile, in the south, the final continues, the part of them moving up there. Go grenade on the Jaegers. Push them out there, close to Vetsony 2, but not close enough. Really going for it, but yeah, in the end, they have to retreat here. That's even a chance he could lose the Partons to lock in forces here. They're already low in health. Yeah, that's a good chance to wipe here on Macross Partons. There we go. In fact, they are dead, deceased, bereft of life. They are, in fact, ex Partisans. Trying to learn the Falogans are going to move up here for the Schwerer Panzer Quarters. Push your Panzers, maybe some Orbital Darden. As for Macross, we'll have, of course, have to yell he handles the loss of the Partisans. Season is stopping the Aegis. <clears throat> Fortune Moon Force there for Login. Picks up the T70. Flanking for the south. Can okay, we have halfway done here for login? Second one. Obviously indicates this. He's even concerned about the T-70 rolls, potential of more armor to hit him. And certainly if he gets suddenly hit out of nowhere by like a T-34 and 6, that could be problematic for login in the extreme there. Go Brunhan going off though. He's rendering the building. Not particularly useful here for Macro's infantry while it is, but <laughs> for poor Fiedri though, he was too close and burned up. And now Macros pulls a bit of an interesting one. He goes for a sniper. At the 30 minute mark, definitely not what you typically see here, I think. Interesting choice in some regards. Otherwise, perhaps not so much, depending on your player style. Shvier Panther quarters up here for login, though. On the cutoff point. Also, doesn't quite cover the fuel point well. I'm a bit surprised it's up here, but I guess he also wants to cover the victory point. So, kind of greedy there by Lock-In, to be honest. Like, if Macro City have a bunch of anti tank guns, he could rapidly take it out there. But so far, with no support and company, Lock-In is certainly not looking to get punished immediately, at least. Sniper out. Full speed seats inside the church. <clears throat> Flag happening back up at the cannon effort. Folks with the heading in the mine, losing Otto and Friedrich. Snub there with the first kill. As Dietrich gets killed. Two kills, almost getting wiped. Piat looks like locking on wasn't paying much attention there. Perhaps wasn't quite believing his eyes. A sniper? In this matchup, on this map, at this particular timing, 
And there you go, Mankin Aston and Company going to push for the T-34 Sunscreen versus Larkin, who is definitely going to be feeling the pressure from that, the heat for sure. Shroud Punter quarters right about Authorized, but crucially, he's going to be a bit behind there on fuel hit compared to Macross, who is not behind on the field for the tank. We also got a demo charge in the south here, ready to surprise any Germans with a explosion. An explosion. Very close to that T-34 from 6. He could, of course, go for Kachusha on Ishid 5 instead, but the Ishid 5 I feel like would be a bit uh, overkill at the moment. And a bit of an extreme choice. Whereas the T 54 6 is a nice middle ground. This is both infantry and some armor. Of course, he could plan the Kachusha since Login is playing somewhat defensively, so having the Kachusha rock roll rate one bard. To combine with Spy Network, could be quite powerful as well there. So maybe Macros is, in fact, planning for the Kachusha here versus. Uh, Login as his first mechanized armor company unit. But no, he does hold to commit to the T-54 from 6, which is just a nice choice. And there you go, he baits the fault into the building here. And pop goes the weasel full wipe. Their building collapses, entombing the remains. Flopping fortress into the Jaegers and the Flatcraft track. Push about the Jaegers there. Almost getting wipe in login. T-34 from 6 right around the corner calls lock. Macros at this point is actually not far away from a second one. Really just highlighting that one of the you know, less talked about powers of the T-34 from 6 is once you get the first going, you can rapidly follow up with another one. MG-34 on top as well here. Logan will absolutely need some uh, Armoured Warfare here to push back against Macros and his T-34 and 6 Sis, as they're likely going to be more there. Up north, folks about to hit by the T-34 from 6 And there you go. Heinz there getting made to load to bits. Then Hans falls into the great pixel of afterlife. There's the T-34 from 6 claims two for the Red Army. T-7 gets knocked out. A small win there for Logan. But uh, there is still the T-54 to deal with, a significant threat to both infantry, armor, and structures. The captains are ready, there we go, pushing down to half health, forcing Macross to immediately vacate the premises with his tank before he turns, it gets turned into a burning pile of scrap metal. Still, he can shoot for another one, which point again, things get further pressure if log in. His trap hunt quarters did take some damage. Snubber there with six kills. <laughs> he could also, of course, go for the Kachushi here, but honestly, I think just going for more T-34 from sixes is a really solid choice. Meanwhile, we got the Orbison squad away here for login. Thumbs up. Some more elite infantry, I think, could be a very good investment. There you go. Macross just going for more T-34 from sixes. Snubber lands good here on the full screen squad there. Another quick kill there. Eight kills now, veterans you want. So that will charge off. Nice hit there from the sniper. Logan, I think, definitely needs to get more aggressive. He's definitely, I feel like, lost some of that boldness that like, characterized his early game, which I think was fairly successful. And now he's just playing very defensively, which I think concedes too much here to Macross. Now you go T-54 rushing in. Not enough news for the Obstardens light machine gun. Oh, he does have the Storm Pines equipped with a Pantra Shake, but he's still getting sniped here. We got 10 kills on the sniper. Pulls about to get wiped out. Moving into Panda Fast. There you go. Could have timed a bit better, so we get a damage then in the T-54 from 6, but the second one has arrived. And so again, Macros enjoys a larger number of tanks here, overlocking by a significant majority. He could have planning a Panther 4 here or Yak Panther. He may also be thinking he wants a Panther, but yeah, no. I think Panther 4, Yak Panther 4 is going to be the better choice. There you go. Panther 4 with him to match the T-54 from 6 to be somewhat in firepower cost efficiently. He's caught in the south. T-54 rushing in there. Causing complete disarray here for Login. As again, he just exploits any gaps there and causes confusion and disorder. Really well executed push here by Macros. Thumbs up there. Really messes with Login's ability to defend himself effectively. 
It only takes a bit for you to control these two T fit for some sixes across half the map, mate. Straight to the pension check, that's lose the Sturm Puny, I need to retreat them. Fixing up the T fit for some six. Troops sitting up from Macross base and needs to, oh, need to get that T fit for fixed up. Flag craft attack moving forwards. There we go. Pantafall ready here. Quick Pantafall said now. Will he be able to finish it off there? And of course, going to be a big question here for login. I mean, we can see the macros or main forces to contest such an attempt. We got the snob, we got the penal troopers there. Jaegers machine in there looking to return the favor there to macros. Pantafall is moving in there. Flat craft tech rolls assist here. It's one squad pinned down already. Another one suppressed here. I think there's a chance we've got troops on the fuel point there. Yeggs can bombard by the T-54 from 6. Panda 4 is only slow to rhyming. we got flares off here as Macros looks to get the most knowledge he can here against Larkin. Perhaps aware that there's a possibility for Panda 4 here. And definitely gives him the chance to spot it here. Good shot from the Panda 4 that leaves two Pium troopers dead. But by now, the T-54 from 6 is more or less safely back in the base. And Larkin cannot pursue here without risking losing the Panda 4 and not doing anything with it. So it's a, a fairly well done there, delaying action by Macross as he looked to cover the pullback of Steve Fit from six. And again, he is crucially close to a third one. And that's definitely, I think, going to get a bit more dangerous here for login. Again, like if Macross just hits critical mass with the T Fit for some six, it's going to be very difficult for him to stop. Penal troops are almost wiped out. We got the other T Fit for moving in. Sniper keeps killing them. We got 16 kills, a bet two. Still shot munitions there for the Orbisodden and the MG-54. Pins with the engaged by the Panther 4. Folks are flanking in there from the south. Good shot there. There we go. Macross with a third T-54 from 6. He could go for issue to 5. He could go for Katrushes. But just going for a bunch of T-54 from 6s is a really efficient strategy. Make no mistake. Mounting Northern Fuel Punk, could consider laying down some mines. Once he's upgraded the Orbisodar, and I definitely feel like, you know, while Orbisodar are definitely not bad without that machine gun, they're definitely much better with it. I mean, on an individual basis, Orbisodar named up the upgrade as, like, basically the best infantry in the game, in a sense, like, they have the most DPS and such, but you really want the light machine gun, though. You really want it. Grand Northern Point there, well, best rifle infantry. Be more specific in the south if Orbison almost got the southern point here. Still not upgrade for them though. Wonder was planning something else with all that munitions, but I definitely think you should go for that light machine gun. It is a really good upgrade. Field gun here from Macross, having checked for that. So if we're gonna make things tough here for login, but once more wish to stress, he's got three T for four some sixes. That said, Larkin does have two Lakeheaded Mavs and a Panda 4, but still, that is a lot of firepower these T-54 from 6s can unleash against. I mean, he can at times have little room to react before the T-54 from 6s annihilate him. There you go. Machine gun position in the center, crumble there. Flak half track hastily retreats in the face of Macross's armored fist here, striking in the center. Panda 4 moving in. They should have the pin on MG-42 there if possible, once he's upgraded the opposite button, which he hasn't. Quickly bring in to occupy the center. We've got 396, 236. Well, let's see what Larkin goes for next. Maybe another Panther 4. Yak Panther 4, the thing could also be near as all these T 54 from 6. But there you go. First shot bounces. The Kenneth setting up here. Good shot here. Pentry in the T 54 from 6 front Lama. Almost better to on that T 54 as well here. Panther 4 pursuing, but it has been marked for death here by Macross. Pins right in the center. Good hit from the field gun there on the Panther 4, putting down to half over. There goes Sniper Lance. Another kill. 20 kills near east of that star has been an excellent investment for Macro so far. Up north here, heavy aircraft fire there, knocks out the aircraft, or anti aircraft fire, knocks out the aircraft, gaining metric on the flak craft in the process. In the south, their points being claimed by the Red Army as Macros does not slow down. But very soon here, Locken could go for another Panzer IV. Again, he could be tempted to go for the Arc Panzer IV with this better range and rate of fire, plus even better penetration. Obviously, not that good as infantry and weak if it gets flanked by the T-54 from 6 Swamp, but on the other hand, head on, it would definitely help a bunch, I think, there for log in in fighting and contesting all of Macross's tanks. And Macross, meanwhile, bring up more field guns, more into tank weapons here. Mines being laid down here. Macross definitely feel like it's Logan has to come to him rather than the other way around at this point. So he's just going to dig in. 
and you know make things as difficult as possible, which is certainly I think a good human situation. And lock in, does go for Tillery, just not expecting he's actually going for a Howard, so they like to filter bits at scene. So that's gonna be a bit of boom here, though of course whether or not he can leverage this is another matter entirely. Can we have Lance get the T for the force from six with its 88mm rocket? The Ken Murphy basically was a pantry effect on wheels, but with better accuracy and more range due to a bigger tube. Let's end the end to the Pantry Strike 1 0 because the Pantry Strike was just more mobile and easier to transport around. And I imagine also easier to produce. Fortune Force with the T Fed Force from 6. There we go. Looks like it's going to try and tumble the Panther first shot they didn't. Also, the House of Valley does crucially delay any additional armor here for lock in. So, while well, he could work out, they could also work out for Macross a bit there, in particular since Macross is now close to a fourth T-34 from Sexy. Felkin's moving in there. Howitzer is right around the corner here. They're going to get in the Shrap Hunter quarters. They're bunched up. Definitely would be a good target there for the Howitzer. If he were to realize it. Yo, looks like he is going to try and fire there. Of course, whether or not the how to hit is an entirely different matter. First shot falls a bit uh, off the mark there. Close one there. Bunch up the field because they're going to up him to get out of there. There we go. Direct hit. Kill soup. The gun is there. Four kills on the field gun crew. Definitely picking up there for login. HVR punch calls though didn't take too much damage either. That's it. There's still the threat of three T 34s and sixes with a possible third one when HD5 packing up here for Macross. Panther Wolf is good to go here for login and the German army. Keep throwing up here, getting the false grenades with its mighty gun in there. Go to Kemblan's good hit that punch trick through the side armor of the T 34s and six. Mine's being set off here by the Howards as well. And for sitting out here, seizing the southern victory point, he's got the center one there. And again, he could soon go for more tanks, though, of course, well, not he does that, it's an entirely different matter. But like 40, 34 from sixes would, I think, allow Macros to just pull off a steamroller attack against Login, possibly, in particular, combined with Spy Network. So, he can go for it now, but again, whether or not he does it is, of course, up to him. In the center here is the push up the Pion Troops, flat cap track front way. They're 10 kills, but need two. Howard says got a bit more to go for the fire here versus Macross. But at the same time, the T 34 is pretty much like the only thing you can build, and this is the Katusha. Obviously, maybe tend to go for the Katusha for artillery support. But in the situation, more flares here. From Macross, very consistent use of the sniper's flare ability, by the way, there. In the center of the T-Fed rushing forward, about to get knocked out here. I saw that definitely, I think, it should a bit better. Surprised we're not be seeing any spy network here, but there you go. The camera's caught here and routed. Panther Force nobody seen. Got smoke here being deployed as the flag half pack disengages. T-Fed Force himself the damage. Can issue to five here with macros now. No more T-Fed Force from six in the south. He's being routed by the opposite side. And Panther Force rolling ahead here for the German army. How is it going to hit here on the field guns? Causing quite a bit of damage, so almost taking out the Punitive Squad on the retreat. Mark target here once more, looking to mark these panzers with death. Storm Pioneer basically with the Schwerpunkt Pumping quarters, Asian Farm halfway done. Sun makes pumping season, but Deutschland Northern Punch remain fairly untouched here. Six kills on the Howard, sir. Then up. In Norfolk with the Fox Gundies. Asian 5 tanks are already here for Macross. We've got 29 kills in the sniper. Definitely has been a good investment for Macross versus Login. 
Panther being fixed up. Lots of fuel there being floated. Perhaps a panther. There's something else being on there in uh, login set. We'll have to see. Problem, of course, at this point is actually the manpower for like any tank. Let alone a panther. That is truly what Logan is thinking of as his macros. Keep it stuck up north here. Clean like just grabbed the point with it, but with the guard pium scoring in, he doesn't need to really. A okay, Kim's almost taking out these five tanks, so would definitely help. We also got a lot of bunched up support with the Linfus. I mean, theoretically, if the house was ready, could like fire straight into that there. Don't know if it is. It is Veterans 1, though. Almost ready to fire, but both the Kim and Cruz are getting wiped there and like to be destroyed here by Macross. So that's definitely going to be painful there for login. That is going to make a armored assault here by Macross much easier. He loses, like, you know, two major sources of anti tank firepower versus his tank. So that's pretty brutal there for login. Makes you wonder what Logan exactly is planning here versus uh, Macron South. He also caught with the T-34 from 6, close to Veteran 2. Grab the point there. Very close to the Strafbach. Fault with his Panther Ball moving in there. Shoots and misses. Further catch and fit negative. Fires the houses at that? That can't be right. Okay, find more generally around the center path. So I don't know, it just seems like the house has been kind of whiffed here. Pentacle taking heavy damage here from the field gets of course combined with marked target. Yeah, that field gun barrage or field tower to barrage is completely whiffed here by login. That is a significant waste of an artillery barrage. A kidnap here for login, further delaying any armor. I think at this point, the chance of him getting out any additional tanks is actually getting kinda low simply because the manpower bleeding is preventing him from actually going for anything there. So a bit of a rough spot here for Lockin versus Macross. Bit of a rough spot there going for the Scrap Hunter Cordus, which would definitely also lock him out of any potential armor if he loses that. And so far all signs point to that one gonna go down. There we go, Scrap Hunter Cordus knocked out. So are the has to rebuild it or he has to go for mechanized when going for king tigers but our option of those at the moment do not look great because they are fairly manpower intensive on top of being fuel intensive and as always manpower currently is just like you know the massive issue here for Locke. and like he's suffering from a massive manpower shortage and macros you know has got a nice little health reserve going on all the time now so definitely looking a bit tough here pants warming in between two shit they're destroyed how to getting ready there. Got the H5 though. Small win there for login. Small win. But that is about it here though for poor login. He still has a victory point lead though. And he was able to inflict some damage, but. He's so far not following up on him. In fact, we just get another T-54 from 6 from Macros. Needs to repair his army, to reinforce his troops, heal them. But he also needs to, like, head to grab points. And that's sort of, like, the one thing that's not happening here. It's like, you know, he broke, basically, Macros and pushed him off the field for the most part. But he's not exploiting this. This is, I think, a significant uh, operational error there by login. Like, he is not exploiting the massive gap in the front line. They're looking to, like, you know gain more resources and whatnot. So I feel like that's a mistake there by login. Out of there with six kills, veterans you won. Field guns ambush. T-34 is almost done there. Foot being called out in the open. Pimps are pushing southwards into the MG-34. Routing that one easily. And the Vakadna flanked there by the AST for the force which is quickly sent packing there. Hero of the Soviet Union, Order of Lenin. Pimpsing northwards there. T for the force and six rushing at Lenin north. Definitely looking a bit rough here for Logan as Macros on each another. So it assault here on him. Orbs on the end, trouble. So the foot's going to use Panther passed off here. Damn the engine. Chief and Fort going here for the flag up down north. Well, a fairly well should push here, I think, by Macros. There you go. Orbs have been wiped out. Did not take out the flat craft tech somehow. That's pretty lucky there. But was lucky for a few seconds. But that's about it. Filch moving in there. How in trouble. He's trying to set it up to fire. But pretty close quarters barrage. We'd like to destroy it with the field guns. But he isn't. I think he panicked a bit there. But all the way, though. Lockin now has next no map at all left here versus Macros. 
Got a field gun there, wiped out, destroyed even, but like he still has a lot of tanks, he's still an infantry, and just locking in comparison, Jack has a lot of fuel but no way to use it. So not looking great here for locking whatsoever. Not looking great. I would in fact say this kind of looks like GG here for the Germans. There we go, Logan's renders, a victory for Macross, a victory for the Red Army, a fierce fight here, certainly I think highlighting the power of momentum and attacks and quick maneuver, but also just how powerful again T-54-6s can be in the right hands. Logan, I think, just kind of sort of flopped at the wrong moments and I think got too defensive, which is where the Soviets is something you typically don't want to do. So there you go, the hope you enjoyed this match, you learned something from it. If you did subscribe, like, share, comment on it, tell a friend, tell a family, but don't tell enemies. This is Imperial Link Tears. Thank you all for watching, I'll see you tomorrow again for another episode. Bye.